Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I am Mike, and today we're talking about 10 things that might end up making fans furiously angry and scream, ah, six. So we did this for Halloween Ends, which makes way more sense for Halloween Ends, because I feel like we were told for a very long time, Halloween Ends is going to piss you off. Scream 6 is a little bit different. It's a lot a bit different. I don't think anybody expects it to piss us off. At least we hope it doesn't. But let me just start by saying this is not a negative video. We don't make negative videos here on the channel for the most part at least unless we really really have to. But I'm just saying like this is just 10 things that could happen in the movie that I feel like would polarize the audience or make fans upset. I'm not saying I think these things are going to happen. I have all the faith in radio silence. I think Scream 6 is going to and rule, man. But I'm just saying, here's 10 things I think that could happen that if they happened, would really piss off Scream fans. So number one, it's gonna be, and these are in no particular order, but it's gonna be handling Nev Campbell, Sidney Prescott being off screen poorly. This one is tricky because A, we all know you can't kill her off or anything like that off screen. That'd be pure butt crack. You hit me with the phone, dick, crazy. But I feel like it's an eggshell situation that depending on how it's handled could rub fans the wrong, wrong way or make a return difficult. And we all know we want her back for Scream 7. And specifically that line that she has in Scream 5 where she's like, well, I have kids now, so as long as Ghostface is out there and my kids aren't safe, you're gonna have to say I feel like something about her not being there, about Sydney not being there, or why don't we call Sydney? There's gotta be, I feel like, some sort of explanation. And maybe that's because all of Scream 6 looks like it's gonna take place in a very short, fast amount of time. Maybe they didn't even have time to consider reaching out to Sydney or getting her help because she lives wherever. Number two, Ghostface not being different for all the time talk about there's never been one like me, Gail. And it better not be something weak like, because I play tennis and no other ghost face has ever played tennis before. Got it, we've heard countless times in the franchise, but this time it's different. And we're hearing the same thing about this one. And this is not me poo-pooing it or anything, but I'm just saying, at this point in the franchise, we've used those kind of lines so many times that this ghost face, I feel like, has to be different. From the shotgun they've shown us in the trailer to the new mask they've shown us in the trailer to how physical of a specimen it seems like ghost face is, parkour hardcoring off of couches and shit like that i feel like it would be super disappointed if we go into scream six and in scream six and it's just like kind of an average you know ghost face and there's really not something super different about it and my biggest hopes and dreams is that this ghost face has some sort of training or something like that whether it be military or star special forces or something along those lines this is not your tripping over himself falling down ghost face this is if he actually catches you you're not going to fight him off you're fucked which makes ghost face all that more scary now i love trippy ghost face and all that and it's funny and all that stuff in the previous movies but like i'm saying i think with scream six we have all the talk of him being something different. We really got to ratchet up Ghostface in this one. Number three, this one's super easy and it's just no politics. And again, I have no concerns about this happening, but it's a pretty easy one. Look, I'm not here to get into the debate about politics. Do they belong in Hori? Do they not? Because both are true. I mean, politics have been in horror since day one, not the living dead. Hello, but going, it's also true that, you know, politics aren't done very well these days in horror movie. It feels more shoehorned. It feels more like virtue signaling and, and that's on the, whether you're the right or the left, just like scream has never been about that. Scream has always been a, a roast and a love letter of the current genre of movies in horror. It's never spoken on things like the current political landscape. And it's not the kind of conversations we want to have after a scream film. Number four, make the killer not believable. I think it's okay to say, look, Scream has never honored the size of Ghostface in the robe versus the reveal. That's fine, and it's true. It's a stuntman, and you have to just go with it. I realize that we've done that, but I feel like after the events of Scream 5, we actually, I, th I feel like they ran out of grace for that whole thing. I think it's time to actually make the the killer, whoever the killer's revealed to be, capable of doing what we see Ghostface doing in those previous things. Now, it's not just 5. A lot of people, I think the most egregious of this was definitely Am Amber, supposedly being the one who killed Dewey in the hospital in Scream 5. Now, I, I have... I've always maintained that I think that eventually in Scream 7, it's going to get revealed that that was not Amber in that situation, but that's a whole nother conversation that we'll talk about another time. But you got to admit, there's no way as many people have said that Amber was the one who killed Dewey in the hospital scene. I mean, maybe, but it just doesn't make any sense to me uh, physically, not just height wise, but physical wise, fighting, all that stuff like that. And yeah, Scream, the franchise, has always gotten away with a little bit of that. Scream 4, I mean, neither Charlie nor Jill were capable of what we saw Ghostface do in those movies. Picking up full-bodied humans and throwing them through glass like the 
dog the fucking bounty hunter. It's just not going to happen. But we've always given Scream a pass on that. I think, though, after five again, that that grace period's run up. I think we can't have... I think whoever the ghost face is from here on out, it has to at least make sense. Now, you can't tip who they are when you show them as ghost face. I'm not saying it has to be direct. I know it's going to be a stunt man and all that stuff like that, but you can't have a four foot tall killer and a seven foot tall ghost face. I feel like we need to tighten that up a little bit. And I think if they do that one more time, it's going to start to really upset people. Number five, have a weak opening. I just think it's time for a really shocking, strong opening for a screen movie. The, the opening to five was fine but it was nothing fucking crazy that, you know, it's nothing that just had your jaw dropped or anything like that. Scream five was fine. Scream four, the one before that was maybe the worst of the franchise. In my opinion, they just went way too meta with it. And it just felt kind of corny and it was never, ever scary. I think it's time for scream six to really have a strong opening. We need some scream two type of shit. All right. And if you have the background of New York and you have all this going on, I think this opening really needs to be grandiose or really well done. I feel like at this point, an all right opening might just have people be like, what the fuck, man? This is Scream. Give me that fucking Scream 2 shit in the movie theater or the opening where Casey Beckard's getting fucking, you know. <laughs> Next up, I have all killer, no filler. And what I mean for that is I guess the Halloween kill syndrome, or if you want to talk about it as like one of those Harry Potter movies where they do a part one and part two, I think we're all under the assumption, at least once Scream 6 was greenlit, that these guys are more than likely gonna this is gonna be at least the trilogy with these new characters that we brought in and all that which if they do that that definitely makes scream six the the in-between baby and we, we've heard these directors say over and over again is this movie's like a rocket ship it just picks off and it doesn't let you take a breath until the end and that's all good that's great it sounds fun but I, what I don't, I, I feel like the story actually has to also move the Scream franchise forward. It just can't be, hey, here's an action set piece, a little side action, until we actually start doing the real story stuff in seven. Stew! I, I just don't want the movie just to be, hey, it's Scream with a New York backdrop for fun, and it's a really cool action screen, but it doesn't actually push the franchise forward whatsoever. It, that'll just feel cheap. Even if the movie's really well made and Ghostface is really scary, it'll just there'll be some hollowness to it if it's just a filler between these two movies. Next up, and I'm saying next up because I've lost count, is having any form of unshocking character reveal in the end. Look, if you've listened to me, if you follow this channel at all, you know I'm a fan of Scream 5. And if you look at all the metrics from critical data to money to, to audience reception, a lot of people like Scream 5 too. The majority of people, you could say, at least liked Scream 5. I think what happened, though, is there was a lot of people, and especially the main detractors of Scream 5, that were like, hey, it's not shocking enough. I, I had it figured out too early. It was a weak reveal. And to that, I say, I, me included thought when Radio Silence took over Scream that they're going to do something wild and crazy and super different with this movie. And what we got is, again, what the, the directors called Scream 5 almost a warm blanket for the franchise. You just got a well-oiled, well-made Scream f film that didn't f f fucking that really didn't push the boundaries or test anything. It was an ode to Wes Craven and, and, and what had been built before. And I thought, even though that's not what I expected, I ended up going, that was great. And I absolutely loved it. But now with Scream 6, it's time to take the, the baby bumpers off. And if you really want to leave your mark on this franchise, the, the reveal this time around has got to be something shocking, I feel like. I think Scream 6 needs it, and I have all the faith in the world that we'll get it. And hey, if you went out of your way on purpose to spoil yourself on the reveal at the movie, you do not have the right to go out and say, oh, it was not shocking at all. I saw the whole thing coming. Sit the fuck down. Number eight, bringing Stu back in a cheap way. <laughs> for you guys who know me, you know I'm a huge stew guy. I'm still hoping for it, but let's not get into that whole damn thing. Well, I mean, if you want to, whatever. But my point is this. I do not believe, for all I've said, that Stu will be back in six. I think he'll be back in seven, but that's neither here nor there. Now, originally I thought maybe six, but as things have come out and we found out that Nev wasn't going to be in the movie, it's like, okay, this is setting up a trilogy. That's a whole nother conversation. Now, the people who really hate the idea of anyone even wanting Stu back, the people that are like, Stu's dead, get over it, you fucks, every time it's ever brought up, those people will actually like it if this happens. But I feel like a lot of us will hate this. And that's if they bring Stu back, but in a cheap way. And what I mean by that is if they brought Stu back in some sort of cameo or flashback or something like they did with Billy, well, that was fine because Billy's 100% shot in the head dead. 
But if they brought Stu back in some sort of cameo or flashback or something like that and confirmed he was dead at the same time, it would just feel cheap, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it just feel like a draw, like kissing your sister, like a tie? You know what I mean? Like for all the people like, Stu's alive, Stu's not fucking alive. Bringing him back just to show him, but also just be like, but he is dead in some weird way would just feel cheap and awful and it makes me feel gross and I hate it. Now they did have him with the cameo as 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 Chrome Face Ghost Face and stuff like that, but they also had Randy doing voice work in Scream 5 and stuff like that. So I don't think I don't mean like that. I mean like an official he's dead, but here's a little it feels too like fan servicey, too gimmicky. I don't I would not enjoy that at all and I think it would upset a lot of people cuz it would it just kill our vibe, yo. Number nine, and this one's really important to me, you can't lose the whole Scream feeling. And what I mean by that is, now there's been a lot of talk this go around about Scream 6 taking a bunch of risks. You know, they, they mentioned that the five was their ode to West and all that, and this time they're gonna be doing something different, and that's all good, and that's all great. I love that idea, I think it's time to. But you cannot lose certain elements of what makes Scream scream, such as A, the, the musical needle drops, B, the ghost face clever one-liners, the meta references, at least several almost hateful and mean murders that offset the comedy that's in the film. There's certain things, there's certain certain rules you have to abide by. There's certain things in every Scream movie that you really need to have that Scream vibe. Now, I'm all for Scream moving forward and doing things different and taking some chances absolutely fucking lootly. But there are certain elements of a Scream movie I still need to be here. And I just hope that it all, the whole thing about the excitement about it being in New York City doesn't overshadow that. And I'm sure it won't, but there's a small fear that like, oh man, we're doing all this New York stuff. It's just not going to feel like a Scream film. Uh, I think that would upset people for sure, me specifically. And number one, finally, the last one or number 10 or whatever, I don't know, I don't math, that's why we're on fucking YouTube. We've gone from something that I'm confident isn't going to happen, which is them fucking up the vibe of Scream. I think these guys get it, we're gonna be just fine. But now we're going to something that assuredly will happen and people will be upset no matter what. And that is killing off favorite characters. This is the biggest thing that's going to piss people off and it's the biggest thing that's definitely going to happen. They are going to kill off favorite characters. Now, whether that's because the character is ghost faced and dies or because it's a character that you love that's come back or was from Scream 5, people you don't want to die are gonna die. Now, whether that, I mean, think about it. When you look at it, you hear it all the time on the internet. Kirby better not die. Chad better not die. Mindy better not die. Tara better not die. Who's left? They killed fucking Dewey. Wrong kid died. Should have been Gale. But listen, they're gonna kill off someone you don't want them to kill off. It's a Scream movie. Every film has done it, except for maybe Scream 4. Even Scream 3 killed off Cotton Weary. Now, I'm not saying they have to kill off a legacy character because you just did that and that fucking hurt, but some of the characters from Scream 5 are now fan favorites. Kirby is a huge fan favorite. If you make her the killer or kill her, or kill her off, it's going to piss people off. Uh, there's just no winning with this one, all right? I think on the flip side of that, if you kill off nobody important, it's going to piss people off too because people are like, what the hell, man? That was some Disney shit that you pulled on us right there. So the last one, unfortunately, is a certainty to happen. Who dies and who doesn't die, no one's gonna come out unscathed as far as everyone's not gonna be happy with the decisions that are made. I fucking love Scream 5, I vouch for it, I fight for it all day long and, and, and seven times on Sunday, but I'm still just as fucking pissed as anybody else that they killed off Dewey. God damn it, that hurts every time I mention it. But it's just gonna happen, you know? It's just, it's just gonna happen. and. And I don't like it, Richard. So that is 10 things I think could happen in Scream 6 to piss people off. And I want to reiterate one more time. I think most of these were pretty damn safe on. We're in good hands. Scream 6 is going to rule and we're all going to have a good goddamn day. Comment below with your all's thoughts. How do you feel about all this? What did I miss? What could happen that could really just piss you off in Scream? Comment down below. Let me know. We're live tomorrow, every Tuesday and Thursday from 11 a.m. Eastern to 1 p.m. Eastern. I love your all's fucking faces. And if you would, click the like button. And if, if you enjoy videos like this and you want to talk Scream 6 when it comes out, then, you know, only 20% of you guys are who watch this are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you click that subscribe button and click that little bell, you know, then uh, it'll let you know when we put out videos like this so you don't miss them. So I'd really appreciate that. And I'd really appreciate if you just do something nice for yourself today because you fucking rule. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you soon. Halloween never ends. Suck my fucking dick. And I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box. But suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah. 
So let's go trick or treating, let's go fucking drinking, let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS. Cause Halloween never.